Please welcome on stage John Ullmann. Hello. It's quite cool to have clean code and dirty tricks side by side. So I just want to start, get in because I have quite a lot of slides. And is your brain ready? Not so loud, I can't hear you. Is your brain ready for some new stuff? Okay. Because perhaps you learned something. And first I want to talk about CSS because CSS is awesome. This is not a bug, this is a feature. It's called overflow. And I have, if you are in front end, you quite get to read a lot of stuff. For example, this book here, rewriting your front end every six week. Or another book I li really like is this one, trying stuff until it works. <laughs> On front end, we are really hype driven. So there's a book, Hype Driven Development. And something I really like because uh, another one is called temporary workarounds. <laughs> and if you're in CSS, often I see stuff like that where it's written set index. <laughs> I don't know how I. I think this don't even got work. It's it's it, there is a number, the highest number. I don't know exactly, but this is higher. And how you debug in CSS like that? You make border one pick solid red around an element. So this is how the many, many front-end people works. But um, the world change, the CSS world change, the browser change. So um, who have you heard about Grid? Great. I don't mean bootstrap or this kind of stuff. I'm really talking about the real Grid. Because CSS grid enables you to create any layout with any market, any markup. So you don't need a CSS framework anymore. Really, you don't need it. I mean, you can use Bootstrap or all this kind of stuff. And it's all cool because you can look how you can create some issues and go around it. But it's nice to do, get rid of this stuff. And if we come to NEOS, this is a, a page I created a while ago. And you see here, let me see if this works. No, it don't work. Could make a cursor. You see in the middle here is a, like a, a photo, four photos below each other. And I'm just breaking kind of the, the columns through all the other one. And if you have to done this with Flexbox or Float, you have to do a lot of diffs with different columns and all this kind of stuff. But with Flex, uh, with CSS Grid, you are able to create a flat list of content elements. You see here on the side, the inspector is just a flat list. So you can really create interesting um, layouts wasn't be able without the CSS grid and you can have it maintain maintainable. So with CSS grid your markup becomes so much simpler really and it's so much fun to work with and it even works with the inventor of CSS grid. The inventor of CSS grid is Microsoft really and they it's an in Internet Explorer 10. The support for grid is even better than Flexbox. For you, you can't use every you can't use every feature of grid. You can use the new rules, but you can use the old rules. And the old rules are a little bit sucks suck to writing this stuff. So, who of you knows Auto Prefix Fixer? Yes, that's Post CSS. I love post CSS, really, and I love it. it. And if you follow some rules in this post CSS, you can write the kind of new markup 
where you just can write query template and here da 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 this is the header this is the footer there's this element and auto prefixer create the valid market also for Internet Explorer 10 so and if you make a mistake in that because you have some restrictions auto prefixer says it to you so should we use CSS scripts all over the place yes or no no because it depends it is not a replacement for Flexbox because Flexbox is content driven and grid is layout driven so whenever you have to create kind of a layout use grid and if you want to have dynamically the, the layout adapted to the content use Flexbox and with this knowledge you can create really awesome layouts how you do it search it for Google there are many 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 great talks at the end I show also some resources ah, yes now I'll show some resources so I didn't I, I made the slides in the night so forget all about it if you want to have a link you have a QR code or later on uh, you have the links also online it's all linked so you can learn here Flexbox Froggy some nice game there's also a game for grid it's grid garden so you can play around and learn the stuff and if you more in this zombie kind of stuff there's Flexbox zombie you can learn it and have uh, how to create uh, the layout it's quite nice and also for grid you have a game it's called grid gitters they're really really well done and really nice so next topic breaking boxes do you know this case you have a, a text an article and in the middle you want to kind of a, have an image who breaks out of the content it looks like that that's iframe I animated so that's real HTML here it's not fake it's really working you want to create something like that in the first side you would create a market markup like that you have the article and then you break close it and put the image in and then open it again but it's not that thing we want because first of all we close the article and open it again so it's kind of fucked up the markup and if you work with neos you don't you can't just close a tag you you know you have a content management system you want perhaps a, a select box where you can say use the full width and then it's just break out of this box how you do it you can you could just that's a desired markup you want you just fix the width to the paragraph all this kind of stuff but it's also kind of boring because you have a lot of tags perhaps inside and some other stuff and some videos and then you have great it's getting messy I tried it it's getting messy okay uh, we understand we have to solve this problem but how we have a class we call it breakout and I don't know if you know this VW that has nothing to do with cars that means viewport width and 100 viewport width is the full screen and we set it to position relative and say put it left in the middle and right in the middle with 50% and then we just stretch it out to the side and you have your breakout image who breaks out of the container you can also write it like this with some calculation inside it depends it's good to know have both options that you can work with that uh, yeah that's, that's the problem you don't use to have this problem if you have Mac OS because the scroll bar is kind of over the content but if you have Windows it happened this one and this sucks how we solve this yeah, with the specs because viewport units like VH or VW include the size of the scroll bar I don't know why they made it I really don't know I hate that a specs are like that but to fix this we need to add the following lines with HTML body overflow X hidden and you're done um, this, had, this has some drawbacks because 
you can't do everything if you have an overflow hidden on the body on the HTML element you can run into problems so there's ever a better solution and lucky you if you don't have to support the death browser 11 Internet Explorer you can do this all with really nice CSS with even with with some variables you just create a grid and we say here in the column with the full start and then we say okay minimal you have this padding and default massing one fraction of the screen size then the main starts this is minimum zero and maximum 40 em and then the main end and then this again the same and the full end and then you say every tag in the article has the grid column main the breakout has the grid column full and I put even there a mar margin between them that this that the gap is nice so with this kind of technique you are able to create even nicer layout you don't have to use overflow X we have some issues with that in some other parts perhaps in the front end but this only works on Edge, of course Chrome, Firefox, Safari, but it doesn't work on in the Internet Explorer because it uses the grid auto flow feature and this feature is not Im implemented in Internet Explorer 11 or 10 neither. So I think I'm gonna really make a great party finally if you can kick out this old browser of the stack, really. So, uh, let's talk about Neos Fusion. It's nice, huh? Um, we have here a problem sometimes that you have an important property that you need to, to set because perhaps it's imported or it's a price or it's some a hotel site. We have to set the, the start price or the how many nights or something just imagine and if you have many many pages you don't see in the documentary if this particular attribute is set or not so um, I just overwrite the label the first line is important the rest are the standard labels so I just ask is this property set if yes just an empty string if not an emoji we love emoji so you can also do it in the documentary so it's very nice to to have this because the integrated editor see on the first side even they don't have to click on the page and don't have to go to inspect and look oh is it set or not they just see it okay this document is not valid it just works and if you create a little bit of advanced menu you just can say okay if this is not a set i don't want to have this in my menu so use emoji is something is missing because it's kind of colored you see it on the first side do you know uh, Facebook and Twitter are some really nice guy who collect all your data and but if someone share your link on these platforms they got sometimes an image included in the right, correct size, all this kind of stuff, and you have kind of summary cards on Twitter, in Facebook, I don't know how it's called because I'm not on Facebook anymore. I just killed my account some years ago because I don't have the time for this shit. Um, but you can't rely on that every time the editor just add an image to this panel on the SEO panel we have in Neos. So here's a little trick where you can just say, okay, I have a page, does that perhaps have a header image, and um, just give me the first image of the page so I can fill up this with a override if, the, if no image is set, it gets overridden. So the editor ch still can choose the particular Twitter or Facebook image and with that you have a kind of a fallback and on the on the second content image I go even in the content notes and look oh is there an image if the first is not found anyone 
I just go there and look if there is image. Image, if yes, this one is used, and this works really quite well. Um, this is possible with the newest Neos SEO version three. So you have one reason more to upgrade your Neos to the newest version because it's only working on Neos 4.3. But you have to update anyway. It's the, it's the latest LTS, so just do it, and it's quite a fun. So, um, you see on the right here the dots, so we have a lot of slide less, and that's just uh, one chapter, we have m more chapters, so. Give, give feedback to the e content editor. Many, many times you have some special elements, like perhaps a team where have more team members inside of it, just as a content element. And I often use the creation dialog to initially add out of the box more than one uh, content element, I show it later on. But if the content editor doesn't create this, you just get an empty diff and that's not nice because he don't see it. So please say him in that example, please add slide to the content element that he know what he have to do be because you work all the time with Neos, you know it, and you created the site, you know how to do it, but you always have to think that your content editor is not that smart as you, perhaps in another area than you, but he is not into that code, so help him. And we get some quite, uh, quite nice feedback from, from the editor and said, yeah, I have no idea, but it is written how to do it, and that's really nice. So, but how to do it? You can do in one side, just say, oh, if it's empty, just output this above this. But then if the editor just create an element, it's still there because you have to re-render the page. So another way to do it would be, be like that. You have here AFX code, of course, because I only work with AFX, I recommend it. Uh, you have a content collection and here I put the, an attribute I call it data carbon warning. You just also can call it warning, but later on, because I uh, name it like that, I tell you later. And then just uh, please add slide to this element. Of course, you can localize this. You should localize it, but this is just for easy reading for you. And then you have some custom CSS in the back end. It looks perhaps like that and says, and at the end, the, the last rule, is this not empty, then just don't display it. And like that, as soon as there's content inside this element, it's gone. And it's really nice, it's working very well. And the good thing is you don't have to write it for yourself. You can just grab the package, so use it. And there's a QR code, yes, I see one. Next chapter, use the awesome creation dialog. You notice the creation dialog? Who is of you use it? Me, yeah, that's quite nice, very good. For example, you have a new team and then you can write your team, Robert, Carson, Christian. Perhaps you know these guys. And then you can work with that. You create it like that. and you can cre create the, the child nodes. And you can even pass your own eel helper inside of it. You just have to register it in the settings. Um, split this and then just create the entries. Also here, if you don't read it, uh, have it yet, just grab the package. Next one hide unneeded properties. Do you know that you can hide properties in the inspector if you don't need it on kind of conditions? For example, if I have an, an image and I don't have activated the light box, I don't need the caption for the light box, right? And if I have a link, I don't need the light box checkbox because it doesn't wouldn't do anything you can have a link and the light box at the same time so it will be looking like that in the back end in the first it's the default state if i click on it you have the caption you can fill in the caption on the last 
part I have a link in it, the other two are gone. In the background, Lightbox is still set and the caption is still, still filled with the property. If I remove the link, it's still here. It's not away, but for the, you have some clever fusion code that if the link is set, you don't enable the light box and this kind of stuff, it's your job. But with this kind of code, you really can help the editor to make his job easier and greater. And perhaps you think, oh, this CMS is so cool. I have to tell it to my, I don't know, and you get a new job or a new um, contract. So this is how you done it. You have your client evil, node properties image, and no properties light box, and not properties link, then false or true. And like that, you can make a kind of a switch where you hide the stuff or show the stuff. So show this stuff. And now the awesome thing, this client evil works almost everywhere. You can use it for changing icons because of missing properties, for example. You can say, okay, normally have this product icon and if something is missing, like I showed before with the label, I just change the icon. Or you can also create dynamic placeholders where we have kind of fallbacks to the default placeholders. Uh, we have here an example that's really an example from, from the Neos package SEO. You see here, uh, I mean, when you just write it, just the content of the, the text area is, is, is there, but is, if there's no content inside, first it looks if there is a meta description, and if not, you get a normal placeholder. It's really, really nice. So now we go a little away from Neos. We go into drugs, Breaking Bad. Um, break the points are really bad. At least you have to do it in an email, right? So that's because you have to take some pills because you have your headache <laughs> because it's so awful. And what if I told you this kind of newsletter design, you have here four rows and the, on the mobile two rows is done without any breakpoints, without any media query. There's no need for because there are some other great techniques where you can do that. You can also use it in the default front end, but in emails it's more challenging because you can't use Flexbox and all this kind of stuff. You just have to use the default stuff. And it's just done with calc, with, min width, and max width. So, question. Who wins? We have a box with a width of 330, 20 pixel, a min width of 480, and a max width of 160. Who will win? Width? Or who is for width? Nobody. Who is for min width? Okay, who is for max width? Who don't no one want to leave? Okay, the answer it depends. But in this case, uh, min width is stronger than max width. And that's really a, a base rule. Min width is stronger than max width. And if you know that, Yes, I repeat myself, if the width is bigger than max width, max width wins. Okay, if the value of min width is bigger than the width or has the value of max width, min width wins. This is the specification, these are the rules. And now your customers say, we want a two-column layout with stacks and scales under 480 pixels, but please, without meta queries. And the great thing is, this solution really works even if you have, we have two, two times the same screen and to a different layout with Outlook, but if it's on the narrow screen, it already stacks because it doesn't look at the media query from the, from the screen. 
it looks at the parent element. So it's really, really nice technique. So should I show it to you how it works? I, I mean, I can jump over it, but I can show you. It works like this. We say, OK, this is basically the, the two desktop layout, two column. This is the one column layout. And this is the magic. 480 pixel is the breakpoint. 100% is the parent element. And this is used kind of a switch. If it's greater than max width or less than min width, so it can apply to one of these values. So make an example. If we have a parent of 500 pixel and we calculate that, we get minus something. So 250 pixel is the winner. And with a parent of 400 pixel, it, get, it gets almost 40,000 pixel. So max width is the winner. We get 400 pixel. That's the whole magic. And yes, um, but there is a point. Um, this is a kind of a nested calculation. So there are some great email clients like Outlook who can do that. But I mean, it's not that hard. You just can calculate it looks like that. And we have some fallbacks in it for the really, really old ones. But this one is really nice and just working. And because I have the ability to animate some iframes, I made this. Um, just works. But it has no breakpoints. So again, resources. If you have uh, some other parts like bulletproof email buttons, you can go to buttons.cm. Remember, you get the links afterwards, or you can grab it. Bulletproof image, background image, who work in every email. You can get it. Get, go to backgrounds.cm. And also, if you have some, some patterns for responsive email, you can go to that website. And if you want to go deeper about this max and min width technique, you can read this article. It's really, really nice. And I really love this technique because it ma ma makes the life so much easier with all this kind of responsive email hacks and dirty tricks. This is really nice. So uh, oh, I, have to, I have to hurry up. Fluid type typography. Um, if you have a, want to have a modular scale that the uh, difference between the screen signs look nice, go to this website. It's really, really nice to create modular scale. But I have a question to you. How do you make, if you have a component and you want to scale up it and down it for different screen sizes perhaps and keep the proportions intact without filling all the time the, the border radius and all this kind of stuff? How do you do that? all the padding and all this crazy stuff that the component always look nice in the different sizes like that. It's really easy. Just create on top of the element uh, element like you say does two REM. And on the other element, you just make it with the font size, the padding and the marching and all this kind of stuff. So you can create components. I hope you made with AFX. Oh, I have to hurry up. Um, that it looks cool. OK, here is about um, breakpoints and the idle font size. I just show it to you. You can make this fluid, responsive uh, font size. You have to write this kind of stuff. And this is the calculation for that. And I just jump over it. Or you can install your post TSF responsive type plugin. This also works with line heights and all the stuff. So I'm on the last job. So how to get the new tricks? How we, I find out these kind of new tricks? There's a one simple rule. And because I have to use this word, read the manual. And read the release notes. Because there are many trips and tricks, especially for NEOs, 
we, we try to get a new feature, make some examples. So read this. There's a lot of work in these release notes and in this stuff. So read it. And for front-end techniques, I can really have one side where really I can recommend it's Smashing Magazine. It's really nice and have many, many links. They're great uh, writer there. It's really nice. So I'm just in time. Merci vielmal. I mean, thank you so much for being here, for having me here. You can grab your slides here with the QR code and later on they also get um, notes on Twitter on this kind of stuff. So have fun with the new front-end techniques. <laughs>